sort of beta nonsense. Right. Okay, perfect. Hi. So today I am following up with Giancarlo after I think it was a couple of years now. It's been been a while. But uh, what have you been up to? Um, hi. So um, I've been basically researching many other typologies like the Enneagram and, and, a, and a typology by my Swedish friend. And during that time, I was also on Discord a lot, uh, even though I moved from Discord to other social media recently. And on Discord, I met this interesting guy. His name is Lamb Sauce. I mean, that's his um, Discord name, not his real name, oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. And you know him as well. And something that I noticed, like, is that people on Discord tend to have, like, a skewed um, image of what extroverted sensation looks like uh, mm. on voice chats or on videos. Because Lamb Sauce typed himself as an IOE or an EIE. And... Uh, um, people were typing him SLE a lot on psychology because he is very verbal and and um, assertive in his communication, in his way of communicating ideas. Like he's very confident and will talk over people a lot. Yeah, and can be very argumentative as well, uh, yeah. as you as you know well. So people somehow were thinking that like perhaps the role function is not supposed. I mean. First of all, what do we define as SE? You know, let's start there. Well, actually, for the sensation, that's going to be the orientation towards having an impact on one's immediate surroundings in an often competitive atmosphere. The idea being that by you having the biggest impact, you are pushing other potential impacts out of the way. So extroverted sensation exists in a necessary opposition to extroverted intuition. Extroverted intuition is trying to increase the uh, realm of possibility, allow more things to potentially happen. Extroverted sensation is saying, no, I'm acting upon this reality now. I'm imposing my will on it to make it happen the way I want it to. I see. So perhaps the scope of SC doesn't include, because when I'm thinking about this, drawing comparisons between Lamsos and people like, for example, let's say um, Gregory Sukov or uh, Benito Mussolini or yeah. female samples that perhaps are more modern. I don't know how familiar you are with pop culture in America, mm -hmm. but there are like lots of rappers like 69 or... Uh, sits each nine. I don't know if you know that guy or sure. Nicki Minaj. Do you know her? I actually I've seen Nicki Minaj. Yes. Yeah. I mean but that's kind of like or yes. Andrew Tate. Yeah. You know. You know what I mean? Yes. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the people who are natural scrappers, you could say scrappers. Yeah. They are. They are in, tend to have a certain materialism to them. They are about getting things, winning big. Being in, if they are in a politically inclined, achieving positions of power and influence. Yeah. Um, so when we look at someone like uh, Lamb Source, um, mm -hmm. well, Ryan Petrello, what we see is someone who is, yes, he can get a, a kind of aggressive in his territory, but he's also someone who's fundamentally about the exploration of ideas. And when he's most excited is when he's talking to people he thinks he can explore ideas with. Yeah, that's what I see too. I see that he is, he gets very, um, his enthusiasm becomes bigger than perhaps he perceives yes. it to be. So he starts talking very loudly and no, I know because I've researched and because I'm so happy about to talk about this. You know, I don't, I don't see someone seeking power or to climb up a certain ladder. Like if you could, like, yes. you know, he, he has, he has um, Damon he, he or Tony Fountain, like. He, he basically has unbridled enthusiasm for his ideas. He yeah. doesn't necessarily have the people skills to manage that enthusiasm in a, in an online space very effectively. He also is surrounded by people who, in most circumstances, know less than him and don't really have as much to offer in terms of theoretical knowledge. Um, he sings a very different tune when I'm appearing on the chat. So then he's actually very eager to hear what I have to say. And he'll start trying to shut other people up so that they can, so that he can listen to me more. The point is, he, he he is decisive over what voices are going to be carrying the most potential to learn something new. 
And that doesn't go against extroverted intuition in leading function. Because if you have extroverted intuition in leading function, you're actually quite it's stubborn in terms of what you actually think is possible. And that involves not only keeping open possibilities, but also when you decide there aren't actually other possibilities here to pursue. Uh, I at least strongly lean towards keeping those possibilities open. But however, whatever decision they make, they'll be quite firm in that. You can't convince an ILE, for instance, that the possibilities are more open than they already think it is. Yeah, because they're logical types and they also have DE role, which is a strong function. Oh, that... oh, oh no, it's the same for, it's the same for an IEE. It, 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 it's not oh. about the logic. It's about the stubbornness, the inertness. Oh, the, the inertness of any. Okay. So yes. That's perhaps exactly. what people were seeing. So, because I know that many people's stereotype of the ILE perhaps is more passive, as an in intellectual, but passive, which in my opinion fits like an SLI or an LII better in many cases. I mean, what you find with ILEs is they can be very passive and yielding in a very physical space. Yeah, in a physical, like real life space, not yes. on this board. They're actually yeah. more yielding in the physical space than even uh, even perhaps an LII, because oh. for, an, for an ILE, they are very flexible in their sensation. They uh -huh. expect someone else to take charge of managing the sensory information around them, the day-to-day -day stuff. So yeah. they're not inclined just to make things happen a certain way around them. It's only when it comes to an intellectual sort of space where uh -huh. they are, where it's about controlling the openness and closure of what ideas are coming in, what new routes there are to discover, thinking more strategically, that Anayali will start to sort of take the reins a bit more because they want to open things up more and people, without them opening it up, other people could keep it closed. Um, but when it comes to day-to-day -day life, ILEs are incredibly yielding and unassertive because it's not that, that they, are, they are open to what other people have to suggest. Because you take an LII, they have a sort of fragility to them where they will far more than an ILE say, I don't like this. I don't think I'm not comfortable about this. I think when this needs to be switched off or that needs to go, but they do not, they are in, in, unable to actually then impact to make it happen. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, sometimes I wonder if like, because I have, I have a friend from Sweden who makes uh, lots of philosophical works. I might introduce you to them in another meeting. Yeah. Uh, because that's not the topic of this video. But yeah, I've noticed that whenever he doesn't feel comfortable with a certain atmosphere, he will say, I don't like the way they're treating me. And he will just leave a chat like that, like mm -hmm. automatically and then tell me in DMs. Because yeah. like I will bring like this SCE guy and he will be very broish and aggressive and abra abrasive. Yep. Like if people think that Lamsos is an SE base, like Lamsos maintains himself. He's, I will say he's very excited, but he's not, you know, uh, brash in the way that many SLEs are because here is an argument that I'm going to read uh, from someone that I'm uh, who I'm not going to name yeah uh, on ecology and they say that lamb sauce bulldozes people consistently and has a similar interview style to Royce I don't I don't I don't think you know that guy I takes don't. control of every conversation has clear goals does not explore in the same sense of any base but maybe more open-minded than other SLEs he has a clear pattern of aggressive, not a rare one-off thing in, in a, a constant pattern. He wants people to submit to his will and ideas. No, not really. Um, he, he doesn't want people to submit to his will. He, otherwise, he'd be trying to get me to submit to his will. But, you know, he, yeah. he does, he, he, he's interested in showing me his ideas and seeing what I think of them. He's not interested in trying to override my ideas. He, yeah, he... I think that what he wants is to limit the amount of stupidity or, you know, white noise on Discord, because I think that he has an yes. idea of having high quality intellectual conversations. But because Discord is so full of like trolls and people who are just intellectually incompetent, he learned yeah. that in order to make his experience and the progress of his work more efficient, he has to cut certain like individuals off by like, I, I guess, I mean, and I think that an ILE can do that, you know, like, yes. Ileans are, not format. <laughs> no, are able to explore possibility and yeah. evaluate because they do actually have introverted intuition as well 
they're also able to evaluate what what are the depths of said possibilities. So they don't just keep things open blindly. So if they know they there's no point investigating these possibilities, they aren't going to yield anything. They're going to actually be willing to shut those down. Exactly. It's a it's a four dimensional um, in, uh, element. So I wonder like where they are getting their references for what an ILE sounds like in voice, perhaps which types they are confusing ILEs with that might be more passive or in conversations like that on Discord. When they I, say I think I think it's I think it's lar largely to do with taking parts of a type and stereotyping those parts, turning it into a caricature rather than thinking about what that type actually looks like in terms of the nuances of real life. And yeah how much a role function and the ignoring function actually end up playing a part in all this. Um, there's also culture. So I don't come across so much like Lamb Source. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not exactly the same as Ryan, but that's because, for one, I'm, I'm raised in a very different sort of environment to him. He's raised in New York. He's raised in, um, he had more of a sort of um, an upbringing where you're encouraged to be more sort of bullshit and assertive. Yeah. I've noticed that people in America tend to have that overlay, especially like if they have parents that perhaps have a lot of SC influence. Like I know a friend that uh, she's, a, she's an Enneagram 548 social yeah. and people thought that she was, a, was an eight core or that she wasn't, couldn't be double withdrawn because she can be very loud and, and brash with her opinions. And that's yeah. because her mother is an SLE. And her mother is an SLE uh, double assertive, like 287, self-preservation. So she's a very like overbearing and aggressive, pushy mother that's always pushing her to participate in the world and achieve more and have her voice mm -hmm. heard more. And uh, in a certain way, uh, if her opinions are not asserted, you know, uh, with confidence and unflappableness, you know, people will talk over you and you can't, you know, and that, and you lose power in that way. So a lot of that is influence from like parental influence, environmental influence. And Lamsos um, told me that his father is an Enneagram 8, probably an LIE or an SLE. He's not sure. Yeah. Uh, but I think that that definitely has influence on someone's type. Like, for example, my parents are both Deltas, I believe. I think that my mm. father is probably an IEE and and he's probably seven nine too, so he's a uh, very like happy but not aggressively so person. Yep. And he's very open, but and he has eccentric ideas that we discuss mm. a lot with. And my mother is probably an EII and she's very violent, subverse, likes to keep things like cozy and peaceful, but at the same time she will be very strident with her moral convictions. Uh, so she um, and she's also a social nine with a, with a very strong one wing. So mm -hmm. I had to learn to perhaps be more apologetic or say perhaps maybe I think so as a way of making people feel like their opinions matter too, which I think it's more important more important for Delta types and for a beta quadra family. Like yeah. and and so online it's I mean, I feel like on Tets, my aggression really comes through because I'm a beta quadra type. But yeah. in real life interactions, I might uh, have a certain overlay of being doubty. And I think that comes from my family judging my aggression a lot. They always judge yeah. me, always tell me things so that, you know, that uh, that I'm going to wake up the neighbors, that I'm being that, that I'm being violent, that even when I'm not like I'm just saying fuck or shit, like in a normal tone. You know what I mean? Mm. So. One thing I think is interesting is also worth exploring uh, your, well, I know when we talked, I had the hypothesis of an ILE for you. Yeah. And I said the reason for you potentially being an ILE, and I don't, I never, I remember when I gave, I was never that confident. It's not like I was a hundred percent you are, but I think maybe we should talk about this. I, I, I remember when I was talking to you, I gave it with some humility, but I was thinking about the possibility of your extroverted sensation being a very negative reaction to things rather than being part of your growth and uh, and positive development um so i'm what i'm interested to explore with you is what what, what took you towards eie which i think has always been the more obvious uh typing 
Um, perhaps that I, number one, I think that I seek to influence people um, in the way in which they see the world and and I will take them to conversations about whatever I feel passionate about. And mm -hmm. I do it sometimes on a, I do it sometimes on a whim in a way that might disrupt whichever um, atmosphere is there. And I do it um, almost constantly to the point where uh, I get in trouble or I get uh, removed from servers or I get banned from servers. And perhaps my the actual logical nuance of my arguments uh, it's not that strong, even though I want it to be strong so that people can be convinced and can be moved in a way, one way or another by whichever ideas I think are good and better and have mm -hmm. more uh, value for, uh, I don't know, I just think I have, I have many societal ideals that I want people to listen to more and on, and learn about and I at least I think are not that fixated on this specific path that they want people to walk into mm -hmm. reform things in the world perhaps I just want to uh, perhaps perhaps uh, explore all the possibilities and and logical nuances of a realm that they want to master, but it's not like they want that they, they settle down on something and they romanticize it, I, idealize it, elevate it, and think and mm. and add all of this sacred symbolism into it that I do because I do that a lot. I'm too melodramatic to be an IOE, I think. So that, that, that that's making sense because EIEs that they come with a message. Mm -hmm. They want to share and bring people on board with that message. Mm -hmm. And they want that message to then go forwards. So, and and they also can often tie themselves up into that message as well. It's part of by following the message, people are also following them and believing in them, and and, and to some degree validating who they are by being the bearer of this great message. Um, so there's a great deal of passion in that, and there's a great deal of, um, as you described, melodrama. It's the idea of exciting people and. and creating within them an urgency and a motivation to go and make this thing unfold. And it's quite targeted. It's going in a certain direction. And ILEs are less inclined to decide this is the certain direction. They can eventually. They, um, they Once they've narrowed down other possibilities, they're more likely to say uh, something is worth pursuing. But even that thing is often pursued because of the potential to become lots of other things later. Um, but with an EIE, it's, they are leaning towards having a very clear target or focus to rally people around them towards. And the structural side, the making sure it all fits together and makes sense from an intellectual, logical standpoint is less of a focus for them. It's more about spreading the emotional contagion, you could say, getting people invested, making sure people are bought into the idea as well so that they can work together on it. Is I that see. making sense? Yeah, that makes sense because uh, another typing that has been given to me was IEI and I was a little bit interested no. in that. Because... You think IEI? Huh? So you think IEI? Um, I mean, um, when I look at the way in which I behave or not behave but appear energetically in the real world, um, I think, I mean, I don't know if, if an eight, eight wing seven fit is compatible with an IEI because I can be very, mm -hmm. I can be very aggressive, even though I might be an angsty or, or broody. I think I'm not particularly, you know, like an Enneagram three, uh, person that is, um, very confident and bold or like yeah. an Enneagram two that's very like bubbly and, and open and approachable. I feel rather forlorn, like withdrawn and unapproachable. And I also have a certain awkwardness to my speech that perhaps you don't have, as you can know this. So when you uh, say an awkwardness, what do you mean by an awkwardness? Awkwardness. I tend to stumble upon my words a bit. And when people are talking to me about something, uh, I um, I go like, huh, really? Could you, could you explain a little more? Huh? <laughs> and like you know, my facial expressions are a bit like I am 
not in this I'm not very earthy or grounded, perhaps. Yeah, but neither is I Lee, really. The but the the I mean I'm talking about EIEs as well in that yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. None of these, none of none of the insurance types are going to be very earthy and grounded. Um, okay. But um, what I think is worth noting, noting there is eight. We say eight wing seven. Yeah, it's my, it's my gut is... fit. Yeah, and it's not my core. I think I'm a four actually with a six and eight. Yeah, or okay. maybe seven, four, seven, eight, or four, six, eight. Okay. The, 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 what's interesting is that eight is very not highly. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't. I find it very hard to believe there are ILE eights. When people say that, I think they're probably something else. Yeah, ELE eights are probably not ILEs. They're probably they're probably LIEs or perhaps SLEs. Because the idea of being the eight is very much about control, controlling your life, your destiny, not letting other people impact on that area. ILEs aren't about you know um, winning, taking back control. They are. They don't particularly care about that, really. That they, um, they, they, if they really were fixated on that, they wouldn't work with an SCI. An SCI is more likely to be an eight, I think, than an ILE. Yeah, I think that people underestimate how aggressive SCIs can be, like underneath, like even though they maybe have a cozy exterior, I think they are more rock solid than you know than people imagine. They, they are. They are. They like to be. They, they, they feel the need for the environment to be harmonious and gentle. But if you're in their space and they don't like it, they will push you out. Mm -hmm. That's going to be quite an aggressive thing, if, if necessary. But but also it's that aside, SEIs and certainly don't want to feel like other people are controlling them, and they they, they are quite alert to that in a way which Nile actually isn't because they are again quite stubborn in their sen sensation. Um. So yeah, I know. I, I I think, if anything, I think it might even be worth saying that an LII could potentially be more likely to be an eight than than, than an ILE, and that sounds a bit ridiculous. But mm -hmm. if you think about what is this eight eightness about? Is it actually about being aggressive, or is it about fears and motivations? And the fear yeah, exactly. of exercising like... control over you, mm -hmm. an LI, an LII may see that as uh, they interpret that in a sort of extrovert sensation sort of way and i mean i mean look for instance at someone like oh you know the guy who founded the gnu it uh project thing richard stolman mm -hmm. an lii now he, his fear of being controlled is a very strong one saying that i think that i think that more typically eightishness blends better with gamma i think um uh, these aren't healthy these aren't healthy examples of lii's even i think lii's mm -hmm. over time like all alphas become more collectivistic i wonder uh, what you type uh, jeffrey dammer as because the team of control oh uh, i yeah. haven't seen the uh the drama my, my wife's seen it my yeah. sister who does socionics has seen it and she thinks that's a lie for him interesting which is an interesting typing. Um, I mean, assuming that the way Jeffrey Dahmer operates is about a fixation to certain sensory experiences and the pursuit of those above anything else, SLI could make sense. Uh, I think that uh, what he was all about was to have control over which people uh, can stay with him or forever or like a thing. But that might be also pathology. I think he will, like, that's both F5, perhaps, that he will basically want to merge or connect or stay with a certain man. Uh, and when he will try to leave him, he will uh, feel very frustrated and uh, in that frustration attempt to put things under drink uh, grab objects and smash them uh, uh, and smash them with it and then once they're dead you yes. know he will then consume the body parts because he'll feel guilt about having you know um so, so that, that that's into two things there because okay th what i was told because i still haven't watched it is that it was almost the experience of the organs themselves yeah he needed to partake in he needed to sort of i you know feel and see and 
He was utterly obsessed with that and was sexually attracted to that. But that's a very sensory thing. But the other, which is these intense personal one-to-one -one connections, to the point where for him to feel like he is bonded with that person forever, he's had to basically kill and eat them. And that he perceives to be his bond. It's almost a psychotic version yeah. of introverted ethics. Yeah. The introverted sensation as well. Again, I can see perhaps SLI making sense. Yeah. I see. So uh, it's, the idea, it's not it's not the idea or ideal of anything. He's not he's not pursuing some kind of symbolic or more transcendent existence. He yeah. He really, really likes the the feel and the sensory experience of the organs, and he feels that like he's really bonding in a truly intimate way with someone else by consuming them. Yeah, exactly. That's what he was all about. And I think because he's type right. Yeah, I like those arguments. It's just kind of interesting, you know, how the pathological manifestations of certain types and how people imagine IOLs to be uh, yeah. in comparison. Someone's calling my, my, my father, sorry. You can hear that phone behind That's me. Right. Yeah. And, in and how does the IEI differ from the EIE in terms of how aggressive they might be? Because I think there might be... Places the IEI is a type which is like the IOLE, they are not stubborn in their sensation. They are flexible in their sensation. I see. And it's also even weaker. So they, they are types who are really dependent on someone else to impress extroverted sensation onto them. So uh, yeah. um, the, in practice, it looks like they, don't, they aren't really doing many things or are passive or contemplative. What do... What does that mean in practice? Because yeah. I think that I can be very assertive when I'm at work and there is like a homeless person that I'm supposed to remove because I'm a guard and yeah. I will tell them to go. And if they, if they don't listen, I call the police. Yeah. Uh, even though I don't want to, you know, be out there asserting myself all the time. I just want to be on my computer researching what I think is important, what I think truly matters, yes. which are human archetypes and the collective unconscious. And that's what I want to be doing. But when people... Mm -hmm call me for it, I will go and do it, you know? Yes. What you'll find with IEIs is that they are intense internally, that they they have the, the spirit, they have the values of a beta, right? It's not that they are without that intensity. They, they, they crave it from an external source. They need someone to basically take charge in their environment. And until they have someone who is raising the urgency in their environment, they feel as if they can't act. They feel almost trapped within their minds, within themselves. And they feel that they can't actually act on things until it's almost a do or die situation. So this is a type of that... identity from, that, from others. And are EIs naturally acting a lot constantly in a way that's productive and efficient and constructive or not really either? IIs are the ones who could basically do nothing. Oh, EIs. I'm talking about EIs. Oh, EIs. EIEs have, EIEs have this sort of restless intensity already within them. They can't quite relax. They don't quite know what to do for themselves. They have all this tension and nervous energy, and it causes them to both become impatient to act and other times have a paralyzing doubt. So they cycle. Oh, between. there is a paralyzing doubt to EIE as well, because I oh, yeah. be confusing that with the IEI specificity. They have, they have both. They cycle between this sort of SLE-ish impatience to act and the doubt of, of, of an IEI. So they, okay. they, are, they, they go between those two different states. They, they never quite relax in the middle. They're never quite in flow and in harmony with action and their environment. So they never seem to quite relax. Okay, yeah, no, that, that makes, yeah. I, I have like a very horrible time relaxing. And the reason, for example, why I had to postpone the meeting for so minutes was that um, I fell asleep actually at 4.32 a.m. because I yes. have the compulsion to read lots of philosophy online, uh, especially from the philosopher that I believe has wisdom that um, I want to spread to people. But it's just that I feel like my understanding is never good enough of his principles because my I, I have a hard time just narrowing myself to his philosophy and abandoning the Enneagram because the Enneagram is more popular and the Enneagram is listened to people more, uh, a lot more people. And this other philosopher has an audience of like maybe 200, 300 European people. 
and because he started out in his native language, which is Swedish, and now he's moving on to an English audience. And it, I don't know how to how to promote his material in a way that his ideas are presented are not misrepresented. Because last time I did it, I misunderstood his ideas and I misrepresented them. And so I was up just reading through the way in which he reasons and debates people on Norse mythology, even though I barely understand it. And I was pushing myself hard to understand it. Like, and even though I was feeling asleep, like anytime I want to fall asleep, like after I eat or after um, I go to a certain place, I feel angry at myself when I'm trying to, like my brain is like failing me and getting foggy when yeah. I need to do something like, and usually what I'm doing is reading or talking to people online on my Instagram. I'm not really like, um, doing things in a company like productive, expensive, sort of CEO ish way. I don't know. I don't have, <laughs> you know, I don't know what that sounds like, but I feel like my tea is horrible and people, I don't know how tea is. Well, what I find interesting what you said there is that you are, you decided to be the spreader of another person's philosophy. Yeah. And you are almost. You, you you almost feel bad about yourself that you don't understand it well enough, but you feel it needs to be shared and spread to other people. Yeah, that's very interesting. What that's suggesting to me is that a gap between your FE and your TI. Yeah, whereby FE is in that more dominant position, you want to spread a message. You want to be able to affect people's minds as a message. But it's running away and ahead of your TI, which is about actually understanding how it fits together. And you've you basically found something which sort of clicks for you. It makes sense for you. So you found an external source of introverted logic rather than figure things out yourself. But then you want to evangelize that, which is the extroverted ethics coming in. So that that is a very strong argument for EIE over say, I don't know, IOE. Yeah. And um, or, or even IEI, because IEIs. For them, it's very much, I want to figure it out. I want to be the one who knows the truth. Yeah, I mean, the yeah, I just feel insufficient doing it. And to be honest, like, because I, I need to have power and I need to have a presence. I tell people that I already know this. I understand this, you know. Yeah. But in reality, I'm like, I have to like, um, like literally when I, I'm from being relaxed, I need to. Okay, so this. This goes with this. This goes with that. Okay, so how do I argue this? How do I argue this again? Okay, like I start like literally like grabbing my skin like this very densely. I just get very uptight and high strung when I have to argue for my points. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it comes naturally to me. And this philosopher that I'm talking to, he, uh, I think my friend type type him as an LII, and uh, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's it's interesting because a lot of his I've I've noticed even some gaps in like in his like in the FE part of his knowledge because like uh, for some of the types that he has um, described, there are some women, for example, that belong in the c category he names as libidinum, and they are usually the Madonna or uh, or um Courtney Love or Megan Fox type of like sexy woman and they are in one category and yeah. there is another category for people more like uh, Patty Smith I don't know if you know her or uh, Edgar Allan Poe you know it, that's called Misericordia that's another category uh and it and it, it I don't know because it can give maybe like a sensation of misogyny or or insulish vibes to people that don't truly understand the symbolism of what he's doing because he has masculine and feminine types in his typology. And a lot of the SJW West uh, doesn't want to understand types in that way because I know that Claudio Naranjo described the head types as being more yang natured and the heart types as being more yin natured. And perhaps eight is also yang. And then one is yin with the other heart types and nine is gender neutral. That's yeah. what I understand uh, according to what Naranjo wrote and the Arika school texts. And many people don't want that. Like anytime I have this course uh, about the Enneagram and I used to have to quote Naranjo and, and they told me Naranjo was just one man. Why don't you think for yourself? Why do you have to quote Naranjo all the time? You know what I mean? I don't know if that's a problem with TI as well. It, 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 it does seem to me like the thing you are looking to have impressed upon you is not extroverted sensation. It's introverted logic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
you are you to. are that sort of very receptive almost feminine side of you is in the introvert logic area you want someone to essentially impregnate you with introverted logic <laughs> well that, yeah the suggestive function is a very feminine function mm -hmm. it is looking to be impregnated yeah that that i like that analogy to be honest i think that andreas will agree i'm always asking him questions like i will dm him pictures of one person because he does visual identification too or a, a mm. show video what do you think i think this you agree no yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. Hmm. that makes sense mm -hmm. anything else i can help you with john um so okay um nothing else i think that that's it for this conversation i think uh, it was very productive uh I'm, I'm gonna rewatch it so that I can just write a psychology analysis for uh, lamps in my alt because I'm banned from psychology. <laughs> so oh, yeah. or Abraham banned you. Yeah, Abraham doesn't like me, but it's okay. Yeah, uh, I, I, I misbehaved before, but I'm I'm in a better place now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, I'm not I'm not on psychology. I, I I actually do my I just I don't really see much of a point to it really because if you want. Because I think if you're going to put up your typing somewhere, you want to do it where people are going to see it and people from different mindsets are also going to interact with it. So this yeah. is why I go on personality database. I think go go where the people are and make your arguments rather than go onto some sort of dusty corner place and do it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to start to do more because I, I am in PDV as well. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, we need... As many socionic people as possible go to go to come to PD, uh, PDB because that's where, yeah. And sure, there's lots of crap on there, but that's why you need people to come on there and actually make it better. If you yeah. go all the way to said ecology, no one's going to see what you're putting on there. Yeah, I agree. Just a bunch of like, uh, I don't know, neck beards mostly. Yeah. And you basically you got two choices. Either you have your own private gallery, which I already have, because that's my World Socioeconomic Society album and the Celebrity Benchmark, which needs to be updated, by the way. So that's one thing. That's my I got my that's my personal private thing if I want to add stuff there. And my public interaction benchmark is why basically me interacting with people in PDB. Okay. There is there's no need for something in the middle, which is what said the It's like this is the worst of both worlds. So yeah. I think people should go to PDB. All right. All right. Well, Giancarlo, good to speak. Um, if you have other questions, feel free to message me. If I manage to get some time together, I'll try to answer them. Um, right. But yeah, I think good, good luck with your EIE ness. Uh, right. Oh, well, actually, I've got one, one more thing to ask before we wrap up. One last thing. You said you were not just an EIE, you're an EIEN. What on earth does it mean to be a normalizing EIE? Um, normalizing, it means that uh, I have an uh, IJ overlay yeah. on, uh, over the EJ overlay, which means that the TI is more accentuated than for the usual EIE. Is that really the case, though? For Is it really more IJ overlaid? than other EIEs. Is that is that really a I'm trying to thing? compare and contrast myself with other EIEs and perhaps like if I compare myself to Lady Gaga or Freddie Mercury, I see myself as being more high strung and uh and self inhibited. I mean, I mean they, 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 <laughs> they they could be pretty high strung as well though. Um, I mean, in their antics, perhaps, or their public, like, dramatic personas, or perhaps that's what Hollywood created of them. I don't, they, yeah. maybe they're not like that. So is, 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 is it just that you are an EIE who has had a dispensity towards neuroticism, which EIEs already tend to have a dispensity towards neuroticism. It kind of comes with having introverted sensation vulnerable. Like, I don't know many EIEs who aren't high struck. Oh, interesting. Huh. I don't, I don't, they don't chillax. It's not a chillax type. Oh, interesting. I'm talking about more like, you know, the stereotype of the ESFP that's more like colorful and out there and, 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 yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm, I don't know how to describe myself, but I mean, I'm a god as well. So that I saw you are kind of out there. Huh? You are colorful. You are out there. 
but you've also got insecurities. You've also highly strung. But yeah. that's kind of this classic EIE picture I would paint. They are a type who makes themselves very out there, but also are, are very sort of inwardly highly strung and doubtful about themselves. And they're trying to empower themselves, become an empowered individual, because they don't have that to start off with. They start off with very anxious. They can, uh, I, I know EIEs, right, who assume in their heads that people are going to form the worst motivations towards them and that they need to really control their image so that people don't bump them off later. Oh my God, that's literally my experience on Instagram. Oh, <laughs> that's what, yeah, yeah, okay. No, you nailed it. And, and why a conflict with my SI valuing parents because yeah. like, if they hear me saying like being loud and being all, uh, you know, like I'm about to explode all the time is because I'm thinking about every single detail of how people perceive me online. That's everything yeah. that I do. So that's to say, when you said it's an EIE, yeah, I can see EIE. I think but normalizing it's more. Me, I don't know. I mean, yeah. um, you know, I'm not. I'm not a subtype. I, I don't believe in these subtypes. But okay. I, I've, I've yet to see a really strong example. Think, yeah, that is a subtype. Okay. I, I think people. But you don't see a subtype for me so far. I don't think subtypes really exist. Oh, okay. Perhaps it might be just my enneagram type because. Um, um, like, um, I think that Freddie Mercury is a type seven and I'm a type, I'm a type four and that might have influence, but I'm a, I have an eight fits, a very strong eight fits and I have six as well. So, um, mm. yeah, I guess I'm, I'm a more, um, he had more of like a mercurial and perhaps externally upbeat next to him that I don't have. I'm a little bit more militant on the exterior. Even though I'm not very disciplined internally, I'm very chaotic with my discipline, even though I try to manage it. We're talking about very fine-tuned uh, vibes, yeah. right? Very oh. fine-tuned vibes. It's, I've, I, and each EIE is going to have a slightly different vibe. It's like yeah. in the same way you, you, could, you could try to grade, you know, uh, wine by what soil it's grown in. You know, it, it becomes a continuum rather than a clear typology. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's yeah. just, I, yeah, I can't take my vibe typing from Enneagram to, to, <laughs> to Socionics. I can't, like, transfer it over. Nope, not when I'm working with Socionics. Okay. All right. All right. It's, been, it's been a pleasure to speak with you again, Giancarlo. It's a pleasure to catch right. up. Thank you. Wishing you Take all the care. best. We'll speak whenever mm -hmm. you want. Bye. We've got time. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.